Hey guys, today we are talking about a day in infamy, a day when Pearl Harbor was attacked on December 7th, 1941. I'm going to be talking about the attack on Pearl Harbor, but more importantly, I'm going to be talking about the events that led up to the day in Pearl Harbor, what actually caused Japan to come in and attack, and what was the fallout from that and what took place after that. So let's get right to it. The attack on Pearl Harbor killed 2,403 servicemen. It wounded 1,178 more. It sank or destroyed six U.S. ships. They also destroyed 169 U.S. Navy and Army airplanes. The Japanese losses included 29 aircraft, in addition to five midget submarines, and 129 attackers were killed and one was taken prisoner. This tragic event it was the beginning of the end. We're all familiar with this event, but I don't think everyone understands how it happened. It wasn't just Japan decided to go attack one day. There were events that took place and led up to it. And so I want to discuss what took place those days and why it happened. When most people think of World War II, they think of Hitler and not Japan. Hitler was a mighty force, but so was Japan. Japan caused a lot of problems. And Japan was actually the enemy that propelled the United States to get involved in the war. So how did Japan get involved? So under, in order to understand that, we've got to go back to the end of World War I, to the Treaty of Versailles on June 28, 1919. You see, at the Treaty of Versailles, they wanted to make Germany pay, and they did. Now, Japan was not involved in World War I. They weren't actually out there fighting. That was more of the British and the French that did it, not necessarily Japan. So Japan, at the table of the Treaty of Versailles, really felt left out. They felt like they felt like they weren't a big player on the field. And Japan, they, they really felt like they weren't an equal partner. So Japan wanted to play with the big dogs and they wanted to get noticed. So they began to try to make a name for themselves. During the 1930s, Japan's increasingly expansionist policies, they didn't sit well with their neighbors, especially China and Russia. Then in 1933, Japan withdraws from the League of Nations, a group formed to kind of keep the peace. Japan pulls away from that and tensions grew more and more with China. Then in July 1937, Japan attacks China at the Marco Polo Bridge incident. This brought Japan and China into war with each other. The U.S. was very critical of Japan and their attack on China. So the U.S. adopts a very restrictive trade policy with Japan. And Japan, this made them very upset because we were limiting trade with them. It was costing them more, all that kind of stuff. So Japan... We have to understand that Japan is angry, but they're also very tiny. They were 26 times smaller than the United States. And so they don't want to make us mad without having support and without having allies. And so what they needed to do was team up with some larger threats in the 1940s. And so who did they go to? They went to Hitler and Mussolini. Together with Hitler and Mussolini, Japan formed the Tripartite Pact. Now, in this pact, they couldn't attack each other, and if they were attacked by outside forces that the other was not immediately engaged with, they would immediately come to their aid, and Japan used this to their advantage. At this point in 1940, 1941, the United States was only financially involved in helping in World War II. They had backed Britain and were supporting them financially, but we didn't have any boots on the ground or planes in the air. And after World War I, World War I was so tragic and, and following World War I, we had the economic collapse of the Great Depression and the U.S. was very, very hesitant to get involved. They did not want to actually be fighting on the ground. But Franklin Delano Roosevelt knew that he had to do something with Japan because now that Japan had teamed up with Mussolini and Hitler, he was kind of in a roadblock. He couldn't attack one without getting Germany and Italy involved. And so in 1940, when Japan moves into Indochina, now the U.S. knows that they have to do something. So they place embargoes on shipments and goods. In 1941, the U.S. and Japan were in negotiations. 
on trying to come to some sort of peace and some sort of an agreement. But FDR really expects Japan to do something and to do something tragic. So what he does in hopes to keep his fleet safe, he moves the Pacific fleet to Pearl Harbor and away from Japan in hopes to protect it. This obviously didn't work. On November 20th, Japan sends a note to the US and Japan basically offers to withdraw all its forces from Southern Indochina and not to launch any attacks into Southern Asia, provided the US, Britain, and the Netherlands cease aiding China and lift their sanctions against Japan. Now, FDR was not gonna agree to this, and the American counterproposal was sent on November 26th. It's known as the whole note. Now, this required Japan to evacuate all of China unconditionally and to conclude non-aggressive pacts with all Pacific powers. Japan did not respond. So on December 6th, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt was convinced that the Japanese fleet was headed for Thailand. He knew they were on the moves, their ships had been moving, and he thought they were headed to Thailand to attack Thailand in retaliation towards the US. So he telegrams the emperor with a request that for the sake of humanity, the emperor must intervene to prevent further death and destruction in the world. Unbeknownst to him, 600 miles northwest of Hawaii, Japanese Admiral Yamamoto announces to his men, the rise and fall of the empire depends upon this battle. Everyone will do his duty with the utmost efforts. Now, as we know now, Thailand was a bluff, and in the morning, the attack would begin. On December 7, 1941, at 7.43 a.m. Hawaii time, a Japanese dive bomber with the red symbols of the rising sun of Japan breaks through the clouds above Oahu. He is followed by 460 Japanese warplanes. The surprise attack on Pearl Harbor basically renders much of the Pacific fleet useless. They thought that in coming in and attacking Pearl Harbor, it would stop the war and it would stop the U.S. from being a major player. See, Japan thought that the war was going to be fought and won on the water in battleships. It wasn't. World War II was fought and won basically by the planes in the air. So they had three attacks planned on that day and they actually hit several islands. But in Oahu at Pearl Harbor, they planned three levels of attacks. And the first one came, the second one came, the third one did not because Admiral Yamamoto realized that this was not a good idea. He knew that this was not a good idea and it wasn't a good idea because this event was the catapult that launched the United States into World War II. And the next day, due to the tripartite pact, which we talked about earlier, Hitler declares war on the US and Franklin Delano Roosevelt gives his famous day in infamy speech. And the US is officially launched into World War II what takes place is a fallout from Pearl Harbor. Yes, there are many lives lost, but it was, as I said earlier, it was the catapult that launched the U.S. into the war. The U.S. again had been hesitant about stepping in and actually doing something. They were only sending provisions and money prior to this point. So fast forward to November 28th, 1943. Franklin Delano Roosevelt meets with Stalin of Russia and Winston Churchill at the Tehran conference, and together they plan how to neutralize Hitler in Japan. Now, I did a video earlier talking about the Tehran conference, and I'll link that right here for you to go and watch whenever you get a second. From this Tehran conference, the US would agree to officially enter the fight with the British and Russia against Hitler. And they did this on a very famous day that became known as D-Day. And that became the beginning of the end for Hitler. Now we still have Japan to deal with. Japan's the one that originally attacked us. What happened with Japan? If you don't know already, on August 6th, 1945, the US drops an atomic bomb on Hiroshima and catastrophic deaths take place instantly, as well as thousands and thousands of fallout deaths from the blast. And a second bomb takes place on August 9th as Nagasaki is bombed with again, catastrophic damage and death. Then, within a month, on September 2nd, 1945, World War II finally ends with both Germany and Japan defeated. 
Now, one of my favorite things to do in history is to take history and study of the events that take place, but then also look at them at, from an objective lens and see how can I learn from this? What is something that I can take and apply to my life? What's a lesson? What's a moral of this story that I can apply to my life to help me get better? I am a student at the game of life of trying to figure out how can I make my life better? What can I do better? How can I be stronger? How can I have a better life? Now, one of the things that I see when I look at the history and the story of what took place at Pearl Harbor, as well as the events that led up to it, was there's a lot of um, question about who's at fault here. Fault could fall with Japan. Obviously, it normally does. But it's some. there are some people that blame the fault on the U.S. because they didn't enter the war earlier. Now, there's also people that blame the entire fault of World War II on the leaders that met in Versailles with the Treaty of Versailles and how they didn't treat Japan and essentially Germany very well. And there's also conspiracy theories out there that say that FDR knew about the bombing at Pearl Harbor and he did nothing to to prevent it. I don't know where the fault falls. I look at this with my own life and I realize that in all of our lives at some point, at some point in time, we are going to hit a day, a month, a year, a decade where it's just going to feel like everything is hitting us at once, where our entire world is falling apart, that catastrophic moment of such devastation and loss. I, I had to realize looking at my life and when I went through those catastrophic moments, that those devastating moments was I may not be at fault here and perhaps you're not at fault for your tragic moment, you know, circumstances and things happened that were not your fault. Perhaps they were. And perhaps if you look back at the events that led up to that, you can look at it and go, yeah, I could have done this differently. I could have done this differently and I could have done this differently. But at the point of the event taking place, the fault doesn't really matter. In my opinion, I have to look at it and go, you know, I'm, I'm, I may not be at fault here but I'm responsible. And I think that's an important point to make is fault and responsibility are not the same thing. And what I mean by that is with Pearl Harbor, Japan was ultimately at fault, but it was the US's responsibility to, to respond, to react, what they do next. You're not responsible for the events that took place yesterday. Like ultimately you could hold some fault there, but you're not necessarily responsible for those. What you are responsible for is how you're gonna respond, how you're gonna respond. You cannot control what happens to you. You can only control your response to the situation. You see what I've learned and discovered is the one that holds responsibility also holds the power. The one that says, look, I'm going to be responsible in this situation. I'm going to say, look, I could have done things differently. I should have done things better. I'm going to take that responsibility and grab it and run with it. That person holds the power, not the one that did the devastating thing to you, not the one that hurt you, not the one that caused that awful moment, but you taking responsibility for the things that you did do as well as what you're going to do. If you take that responsibility and you can grasp that and hold on to that, then you are the one that holds the power in this situation, not the person that did the thing to you. When you can recover from that Pearl Harbor moment and look back and see what events pushed you to this place, the fault may or may not be your, of your own doing, and that really doesn't matter. When, when you can recover from that, when you can get back up after you've been hit and look back at that and take the responsibility, that is when greatness can happen. There is a fictional quote from Yamamoto in the movie Tora 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 after the attack on Pearl Harbor when he utters the most famous line from the movie. He says after the attack, I fear all we have done is awaken a sleeping giant and filled him with a terrible resolve. When you get hit, don't just sit there and lay there and complain about what happened to you and your circumstances and be afraid of what's going to happen next. You've got to get back up and kind of let that giant awaken within you. You've got to get back up and hit back. There are so many times that I have seen people like, and myself included, that things have happened to me and I've literally just been like, 
in years of circling around the same situation because I'm constantly blaming someone else and it affects my mental my mental capacity it affects my stress levels it affects my emotional health my mental health it affects all that stuff I think that in my own history in my past I have made two big mistakes when when these tragic things happen one is I will just sit there and mull in the devastation and mull in the loss. And I think that there is probably a short season for that. But again, I'm going to go back to that word short. It is short season. It is very temporary. And I realize that you have to get back up. You have to get up, brush the dust off. You brush the ash and the soot off of you and just move forward. And you've got to realize what caused me to get here. But more than that. How, how do you take this thing that broke you and make you stronger? A lot of times when you break a bone, that bone will grow back stronger than it was before. So I encourage you when you hit that Pearl Harbor moment, when your world is falling apart in devastation and decay, you take a moment, survey the damage, get back up, grab the responsibility of it and awaken the giant within you. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it encouraging and inspiring. And you not only learn some history, but you learn some things that you can apply to your own life. So give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can see all the videos that we have coming out every week, as well as give me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this video, what you thought about this story and what you got from the story, as well as let me know some ideas of what of some historical moments that you'd love for me to talk about in the future. And thanks so much again. I appreciate you all. I will see you next time.